Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is the swan song of DC's extended universe. It is a quirky, convoluted finale to a cinematic universe that has always struggled to find its identity. And it's a sequel to Aquaman, which was one of the most well-liked of these DC films. It was a movie that grossed a billion dollars. It was the third highest grossing Warner Brothers movie, only behind Barbie and Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. That's right, Aquaman from 2018 grossed more than Joker and The Dark Knight, which just shows this movie came out at the right time in the superhero boom. It was making so much money, and it was more like a Marvel movie than the Zack Snyder-directed films that DC were known for making. But now it's over, and DC is pretty much dead until it gets rebooted with James Gunn's Superman Legacy. So let's talk about this end-of-an-era movie. The movie kicks off with a symbolic image of the Warner Brothers logo rusting at the bottom of the ocean, kind of setting the tone for this movie. The DCU was a term initially coined in mockery, and it's whether it hits and misses, but Aquaman was always a success, so people were always curious how this movie would turn out. And honestly, Jason Momoa's charismatic portrayal of the titular character, coupled with James Wan's direction, you know, it delivered a big, goofy, and entertaining underwater adventure, and a lot of people liked that. Fast forward, though, currently, five years, Aquaman and Lost Kingdom is a continuation of the underwater saga, and while the film retains the fun and silliness of its predecessor, it struggles with pacing issues and a plot that feels like several movies stitched together. It's set four years after the events of the first film, Arthur Curry, played by Jason Momoa, finds himself navigating the dual roles of a father living on land, that's right, he's a father now, and he's also the reluctant king of Atlantis. And the movie introduces Black Manta again, who's returning from the first film. He has a revenge-driven vendetta against Aquaman, and he's such a 90s villain. Uh, I, I really like Black Manta. I love how every time he's on screen, they play this badass theme song. Uh, I, I do feel like he's a very silly character that just has this group of mercenaries following around. You don't really need a lot of personality or depth. It just feels almost like a cartoon or like one of the Batman, Joel Schumacher movies from the 90s where there's just a bunch of henchmen for some reason. And I really didn't mind that. I get that the movie's plot is kind of all over the place, but I did like a lot of the Black Manta stuff. And despite the film's messy plot and evident reshoots, James Wan's horror-inspired stylings shine through... The underwater scenes are great. I really loved all the Black Manta stuff where he's searching for this lost kingdom. James Wan himself said that this stuff was inspired by Planet of the Vampires, the Mario Bava movie. The costumes and the set designs definitely are. I loved some of the sets. They really had this old Hollywood vibe to them, which is something kind of rare in superhero movies now that you have good-looking sets. A lot of the underwater action stuff, though, is still very ugly or just doesn't look real. It's still very Uncanny Valley seeing humans like... Jason Momoa and Patrick Wilson underwater, and like while there's a ton of fish people around them, it just doesn't look right. But I did think that Patrick Wilson and I thought Aquaman were great together. Honestly, they had good chemistry. And while I thought that, you know, in the first movie, you know, you could say whatever you want about politics or J Amber Heard, though, was not that great. And her chemistry with Jason Momoa is also just not that great. I don't think Jason Momoa is also an amazing actor. He's charismatic, sure. It's not like he can really command emotionally charged scenes. But him and Orm, him and Patrick Wilson are a much better duo. There's more buddy comedy from that. They have better chemistry. It just is more interesting to watch them together. I feel like in the first one, they kind of thought, oh, here's a hot girl and hot guy. The classic, you know, Hollywood structure, the romance structure just did not work with Mara and Aquaman. But it works here, and it's a fun bromance movie. I actually really enjoyed that bit of it. And also, like I said the B-horror elements and Juan's love for the genre add this creepy undertone to the movie that definitely made me enjoy it more. I really liked the designs, as I said, and I liked the music. Um, but the plot is a bit convoluted. It involves this ancient evil, a possessed Black Manta, and a forgettable boss villain, and it kind of detracts from the overall experience. I thought that, honestly, Black Manta is a great character because he wants this revenge against Aquaman, but they have him go to this lost kingdom and I, I liked that. I liked that he's going underwater to try and find, I guess, like a way to stop Aquaman. But then he comes across this black trident. They introduce this other villain whose name I keep forgetting. It's like King Xerox or King Durox. It's King Kordax, but who really is going to remember that? And it just muddies Manta's motivation. Manta's a great character because he wants to stop Aquaman for revenge. Now they add in this, he's possessed by this ancient sea demon who wants him to release him from his watery grave. It's interesting, I guess, but just the way it's stitched together feels so messy. Not to mention there are so many cut to blacks in this. You can tell this movie was edited to fucking pieces just watching it. There's like so many scenes where it just cuts, then there's a time jump, 
Or there's a couple slow motion shots that are super awkward and hilarious, especially in the context of the movie. It's supposed to be very messed up. But then there's just this like slow motion and you hear Aquaman go, no, and it's, it's so funny. I won't reveal what happens in that scene. You can go see the movie, but it's just very, very silly. And yeah, the movie is very strangely paced. But I really liked a lot of the stuff in here. I liked the horror aspects. I liked the bromance. I liked the look of the movie at parts. Again, I wish it just explored the underwater world more. The first Aquaman was a big, goofy, dumb movie. It was 141 minutes released at the peak of the superhero genre. I mean, DC has always struggled. And to think that this movie was the most successful of any DCU movie kind of says something. I'm sorry, the Aquaman from 2018 was so successful really just tells you how, at the time, people liked Marvel movies. They liked big, fun movies. That's what Aquaman was. This one is kind of like that, but it's more like a modern Marvel movie where everything's all over the place. They don't really care about specific character beats or development. It's just, you're just watching these characters go through the motions. It's a very kind of soggy, sad end for the DCU. And honestly, I'm very excited to see how they're going to redo DC in the future. James Gunn's taking over. He clearly wants to make more streamlined stories, more about characters. And I, and I appreciate that. I think in this movie, that's the biggest issue is characters just don't feel like they're developed uh, beyond, you know, the first movie. They, they have a couple flashbacks in this, but that's it. I feel like you didn't need Nicole Kidman in this. You didn't need Dolph Lundgren. They're just kind of there to be there for Nicole Kidman to be like, you're my son. She's a mother. Sure, they have her. You didn't need Dolph Lundgren. You didn't need a lot of stuff in this. But I mean, it's just fun in spades, but such a mess. There's also this part where they go to this um, underwater place, the Shipwreck Citadel, that's so trying to be like Star Wars or a Star Wars planet where there's all this weird stuff going on. I, I like what they're trying to do, but at the end of the day, it's just so messy and ugly, and it's not like there's really this through line throughout. Like, they go there because they want to find Black Manta, and then after that, they leave. It's just going to one place, checking it off your list, and then going on. I really did, like, some of the visuals, like I said, but I just wish the guess the story was more streamlined. The introduction of this underwater sea witch guy, who's played by Euron Greyjoy, of all people, from Game of Thrones, it just totally messes up the motivation. And I definitely feel like they cut out a fight scene at the end. It just is so quick. And the boss villain is, spoiler alert here, guys, you can shut it if you don't want to see, he's defeated within a minute. And I, I just thought they definitely cut so much shit out. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. I think it's a fun movie. If you look at it like you want to see a great movie, you probably won't enjoy it. I just want to see a goofy, fun movie. And this is what it was. And I did like the horror stuff. But honestly, it could have been so much better. And I think anyone could probably tell you that. So let me know what you guys think of the final DCU film. If you're excited for the next chapter in the DC Universe when they reboot this. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think.